I want y'all to deep this. There are 7.9 billion humans on this planet. Four billion of those people are men. You mean to tell me out of that entire seat, out of that entire flock of men, Nikki chose to marry a convicted rapist? We give it to God. Hola, hola, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Per usual, I don't have an intro yet, we're working on it. I just wanna jump into the tea, I wanna jump into the drama, I wanna really break it down for you guys, so we're just gonna go right ahead. In today's video, we're gonna talk about this feud between Nicki Minaj and Megan Thee Stallion. It's been ongoing for a couple of years now. It's really been pretty much one-sided, like Nicki's beefing with herself. Up until recently, of course, you know, Meg put out this new song where she took a couple of shots at a few unnamed celebrities one of which people are speculating is Nicki Minaj's husband. So we're gonna get into all those things. I'm gonna give you guys a bit of a deep dive and talk about my opinions, my perspective. As many of y'all know, I've been critiquing Nicki Minaj for a while now. For those who follow me on other apps, TikTok, Twitter, you know the running I had with the barbs. Y'all know how many times this fan base has banded together to incite a smear campaign against me for speaking real. And each time the smear campaign attempt fell flat because I always have receipts, but I'm also speaking real. Like there's not really much you can fight back against or refute when somebody's spitting some real Shit. I've been in support of Jennifer Huff. She is the victim of Kenneth Petty, Nicki Minaj's husband. I've been keeping up with Jennifer Huff. I hope I'm saying that right since before her interview with The Real in 2021. In that interview, she detailed the assault that took place between her and Kenneth Petty. And ever since I've been outspoken about Nicki's antics and the many ways in which she's attempted to silence this victim, pay her off, malign anybody else who speaks up on the fuck shit that we're all witnessing, her fans follow suit in droves in an attempt to admonish and silence people who are in support of Jennifer Huff. Again, going back to my experience with the barbs, I would have to make another video to really sit down and go into detail about how I have never in my lifetime seen a stand up, a fan base move as messy and as destructive as the barbs do. The barbs are a hive mind functioning off one singular brain cell. These bitches are tapped. Like their sole function is to stream and bitch online. I promise you. I mean, from children to adults, these are people who've been recruited through various social mediums to perform unpaid labor in the form of streaming, falsifying information, fabricating screenshots, arguing on the internet i mean these girls work overtime no benefits no 401k no time off just an apple music subscription and vibes like i'm really scared i mean i don't know and especially when it comes to the younger folk that i come across on the internet who are actively caping for this woman I'm concerned about whether or not child labor laws are being enforced. Like, it's really scary to me. And again, this is all stuff that I can address in a separate video. I can really give you guys a, a, a detailed breakdown of the psychology of these people. Because together as a fan base, they really are a phenomenon. Like, there will be case studies done in the future. There will be case studies. There will be articles. There will be peer-reviewed sources detailing the delusion that we have seen coming from that fan base time and time and time again i promise you now i have my phone out because i want to make sure i'm i'm going point by point i don't want to miss anything in this video to get started we're gonna talk about where exactly meg and nikki's beef originated how we got here before i can give you guys a full well-rounded analysis and perspective on my take on this entire situation so in 2019 obviously y'all know meg and nikki had the hot girl summer collab that was Mm. Great gowns. Mwah, no thoughts. Then on August 7th, 2020, we get a song with Meg featuring Cardi called WAP. Now, I'm not going to go into how Nicki and Cardi started beefing. I feel like that's a whole lot, but most people are privy to the fact that they're not friends. In that same year, July 12th, 2020, Megan is assaulted by Tory Lanez. He physically assaults her by way of a gunshot to the foot. Now, tensions are slowly brewing because in January 2021, Nikki unfollows Megan on Instagram. And this is very likely in response to the fact that Nikki didn't take a liking to Meg and Cardi having a collaboration together. So in May 2021, Nikki releases this song called Seeing Green. I think it came out as a single. And in that song, there's a lyric that states, these bitches thirsty, I can see why they alcoholics. Now I want you to remember that alcoholic piece because it'll rear its head again later in conversation. So that was in 2021. In September 2022, on an episode of Queen's Radio, 
Nikki tells this story about an unnamed female rapper who tried to pressure her into consuming alcohol while she was pregnant. At the time, she also alleged that this rapper told her to get an abortion. Now, you guys know, like, in the earlier stages of Megan's career, she was kind of known for the whole, like, drive the boat thing. You know, at parties and stuff, you could tell she's, like, the life of the party. Like, she would give the girls some alcohol, pour it down their throat. It was like a whole little moment. So once that little audio clip from Nikki's interview started making its rounds on the internet, people were obviously obviously like oh this is Meg like she's talking about Meg to which Meg hops on Twitter and responds no this is a lie this is not true part of me and I'm listen this is just my opinion part of me feels like Nikki was trying to establish or create an air of controversy in the sense that like Megan was trying to coerce her there's specific language that we use to talk about abuse to talk about assault, to talk about a violation of consent. And that language is what Nikki was employing against Meg in that situation. And I find that rather insidious given the ways in which Nikki has gone so hard on behalf of predators, abusers, rapists, admitted, convicted. You are a grown woman in your 40s. You really expect us to believe that Megan at 24 had enough pull, had enough power to force you to drink alcohol, told you to get this supposed baby aborted. And I say supposed because at the time she may or may not have been pregnant. You're a grown woman, Nikki. You're 40. You're fully matured. I hope that doesn't come off ages to anybody. I'm just speaking real, right? I'm being honest. She's 40. You're a grown woman. You're mature. You've lived life, you've experienced things, you've seen things. So you you expect me to believe that Megan, Meg Meg was trying to force you to drink alcohol. Uh, mind you, this clip exists. Let's go, let's go. Turn, turn up, really want me to turn up, Nikki. That was in 2022, following this interview, the barbs are egging on this rumored feud between Nicki Minaj and Meg The Stallion. We're starting to see Nicki throw more subs and be more subliminal on her Twitter account. They're hearing her use phrases like Bigfoot, She's following stan accounts who are also throwing subs. There was a moment when she came out with the whole drop a tear thing in response to Meg, you know, sitting down in an interview with, I forgot who she was speaking with. She's talking about the trauma she's had to endure the last year. She's talking about her mom being gone and how much that has had an impact on her having to navigate through all of this mess and nobody nobody not even any of the maternal figures that she grew up with her mom her grandma being there to support her through this and so i want to be clear about where we're at in the timeline at this point i want to say it's been a year and a half to two years after tori assaulted meg Meg has become the target of incels and misogynists, all of whom are seeking to discredit and disparage her. In addition, she's also having to deal with this lady's stan base. Like, these barbs are incessantly mocking, harassing her, making light of her trauma. In March of 2023, Nicki Minaj releases Red Ruby Disleaze, in which she raps, I don't fuck with horses, I, I don't fuck, uh-oh. 700 horses. I don't fuck with horses since Christopher Reeves. Now, I mean, it's not rocket science. It don't take rocket science to figure out who she's speaking about. It's her entire branding and persona as a girl from Houston. Like, she's a stallion. She's a tall girl. She's a baddie. So keep this in mind as we're discussing the events that are unfolding in 2024. Nicki Minaj was already making use of the whole Bigfoot horse emoji drop a tear she was already throwing jabs unprovoked none of this was beef incited by megan none of this was as a result of megan saying anything about nikki in the public this was nikki being messy from jump so here we are in 2024 meg puts out hiss she's saying everything that she's been holding on to everything that she's been holding in words all the things that she wanted to say with her chest meg is throwing shots at various unnamed folks this could be celebrities this could be people that we just don't have a clue about people who've contributed to harassment people who've been bad mouthing her name people who've been supporting and uplifting other abusers in example r kelly in this song kiss that megan released there's a bar a lyric that reads these hoes don't be mad at megan these hoes mad at Megan's law. For those of y'all who don't know, Megan's law is the federal law in the United States that requires law enforcement to alert communities and make information available to the public regarding registered offenders in their respective area, including a change in address or employment, okay? Side note, when you really sit down and deep the research and intellect that it took for her to deliver this bar, and the way in which it worked, given the context of all the shit that's happened to her and given the context of like 
Nikki's husband. Like, I mean, the, it was, it's chef's kiss. Genius. Like, I had to give my sister her 10. Now, even though no names were mentioned, I mean, again, it doesn't take rocket science to know that this was a direct shot at Nicki Minaj's husband, Kenneth Petty. Kenneth Petty is a convicted and admitted. 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 Rest. Who refused to register as a sex offender in the state of California for his crimes against Jennifer Huff? Within minutes to an hour of that song dropping, Nikki was already on IG Live going batshit crazy. Doing the absolute motherfucking most. She got this little two second snippet that she's probably been holding on to that was probably in the vault collecting dust, talking about some big foot, six foot, good foot. I mean, child, it's, it was giving Dr. Seuss. Why are we back in kindergarten? Why is it giving nursery rhymes? The beat is giving HBO Max rap shit. I'm listening to the beat and I'm like, it's, this is this is Shauna and Mia. <laughs> And it's no shade to Issa Rae's rap shit. Like, I love that show. I'm so sad that they canceled before we got another season, but c'est la vie. I wasn't in the live. I wasn't present for this. Like, I'm viewing this the next morning, waking up to a thunderstorm of mess in the media between these two girls. So I'm looking back at these video clips from her IG live, and I'm like, what is going on? So she's on IG live. She's talking her shit. She's throwing subs. She's being direct. She's being vile. She's also liking a hundred plus negative tweets on Twitter. I mean, it's tweet after tweet after tweet. Some of her stands even managed to get the actual video footage of Megan limping literally the day, the night of that Tori shot her. And they edited over that video, Nicki Minaj's little snippet from her live. And I just, again, another example of how insidious that entire stand base is. The next day, Day. This is literally yesterday. This is the 26th of January, 2024. She gets on this streaming app. I think it's called Station Head and she's going on an entire tirade. I'm going to share some essential key moments from this stream that I feel like are important to the conversation and the perspective I'm going to share later on. You better go conjure up your mother and say and, and apologize that you you that's disgusting. How many dicks of abusers have you sucked knowingly bringing up 30 year old T? from when a man was 15. Just remember, if you're lucky one day, hopefully your womb will bring forth a child. And you do not know what that child will have to go through. Truth be told, in all my years of, you know, critiquing Nikki, I am at a loss for words. And it's not because I'm surprised. It's not because I didn't expect this behavior from her, but more so sitting with the fact that this lady is bordering on soulless. Like some of the things that have come out of her mouth, it is a new low for her every two to three business days. You don't think she can get any lower and then she opens her mouth and you're just like, oh my God. Over the years, as I've spoken on Nikki and covered, you know, trending topics in relation to her in the industry, I've been cognizant and very sensitive to her experience as a Black female rapper in such a male-dominated landscape, and also sensitive to her experiences as a Black woman in rap. There is no telling what Nikki has gone through or seen or been through in the industry. I've always maintained that, and I will always hold space for that. However, where things start to become an issue is when these new girls start to come up from under her right and she goes out of her way to denigrate them if they aren't kissing her ass if they're not rolling out the red carpet for her in all of their interviews they immediately become target of harassment by way of her stands every single one of these seasonal beefs she engages in with these girls feels like projection and misplaced anger over the various ways in which the industry sought to malign her as a black woman within hip hop, within rap. And now she's putting these new girls, these new black femmes within hip hop in a place, in a position to inherit that drama and to inherit that discord. And what's really unfortunate is that in the last two, three, four years, however many years, 
we've been watching Nicki Minaj slowly undo her legacy. It's getting to the point where the antics are taking up more space than the pen, the artistry, the music. This is somebody who should have quite literally been the Beyonce of hip hop, but because of her inability to detach from the toxicity of her stan base, to maintain some sort of distance, mystery, and allure, her inability to let go of whatever insecurities that has her thinking these girls are out to get her, she hasn't been able to give her fans what they deserve. And she hasn't given herself the chance to mature into the artist that she knows that she can be given the caliber of her past work. Nikki should have continued giving y'all pink wigs, Katy Perry level pop production, a documentary at this point, a Beachella performance of sorts, referencing and recycling her old bodies of work so she can bring in younger and newer fans into the fold. Iconic collaborations with well-written bars, stunning visuals, collaborating with up and coming female rap artists on some Brandy and Monica the Boy Is Mine type shit. If she didn't wanna continue you going the pink wig route each alter ego could have had its own album its own musical era experimenting with different genres the branding and vision was right there nikki but you want to dibble and dabble in some mess you want to dibble and dabble in some mess it was right motherfucking there you got white queers on tiktok calling you not the queen of rap but the queen of rape the queen of rape and you know, I want to be understanding. I want to be sympathetic. If I was confined to 12,000 square footage for the rest of my life, I would be angry. I would be angry. I would be pissed. I would be, I would be mad. You got a baby sitting at home. You can't take him to the park. You can't go to parent-teacher meetings with your husband. You can't join the PTA. I would be pissed. You can't lead a normal life anymore. And it's not because of your celebrity, it's because of your willful decision to marry a rapist. An admitted, convicted rapist. But how far, how far are you going to let this go, girl? How far? Enough is enough. Enough. You done made your association to that man everybody else's problem. There was a girl on TikTok that made a video saying, Nicki Minaj doesn't know she's Nicki Minaj. And everybody who saw that video collectively understood what this girl was saying. And this is how Nicki responded. This is what she responded with. We can't help her. We cannot help her. Because she's chosen to play villain. She's chosen to stoop low and participate in the massaging noir that runs rampant in the hip hop industry. The things this woman said about Megan, said about Megan's mother, speaking on the deceased, the dead, there is a higher power and that karma will return back to sender. And another thing, Zach Campbell, there is a special place for you. There's a special, special, special place for you. Zach Campbell previously came under fire for a video that he put out on YouTube where he was questioning the validity of Megan's accusations against Tori, questioning if she was lying about being shot, questioning about whether or not she was in fact suicidal because she stated that in an interview and attributed his reasoning for that doubt to the fact that she's an Aquarius. After posting that video and receiving feedback because the girls got him together, he took the video down and then followed up with what seemed at the time to be a sincere apology. So can you imagine my shock? And I'm, I'm saying shock very lightly because I wasn't. But for the sake of this video, for the sake of where I'm going, where I'm taking it, follow along with me. Can you imagine my dismay when I went to this man's Twitter and saw him championing Nicki Minaj weaponizing this girl's assault? for petty rap internet beef. Mind you, this is Zach Campbell in a previous video. This video definitely put in a perspective of how she was, what she was going through these past few years and specifically the Tory situation. I wanna just apologize again, even just more loudly, more publicly, because my asinine comments were loud in public. This video hits me harder because you did the most beautiful job of putting a description of what you were going through in a music video form, in an artistic form that I can feel that made me 
just want to say I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm beyond sorry, actually. Trying to dumb down, water down your experience to make it digestible for entertainment, to make it funny, to make it a laughing situation. And that's why it hurt so many people that was mad at me about that, but also you. Because I'm spectating, talking, and I'm not helping. I speak about black women, I speak about loving black women. My job as a black man is to do, is to listen. And I apologize to all black women out there that felt like in that moment when I made stupid comments about her situation, try to make it funny, make it a joke, or not even believe what she said. Do these tweets align with somebody who purports to be an advocate and a supporter of victims? Victims of violence? Black women? Do these tweets align with what y'all just heard in that video? I think the fuck not. I've had very unfavorable opinions about Zach Campbell. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. If I'm going to be a hater, I'm going to stand on it. I've had very unfavorable opinions about him. I just feel like he's incompetent. I feel like he is just a reaction channel and that is just the way people should engage him. He is not somebody that possesses any sort of intellect, any true intellect when it comes to music and the way people consume it. He is just a reaction channel. He gave the girls very cute moments. Moments that we could all kiki and laugh at. He's just a stan, a lover of music with a YouTube platform. And this is not me saying that he said other otherwise by the way this is just my opinion as somebody who has loosely engaged with his platform this is just my analysis of the role he plays in the internet landscape when it comes to music criticism music reviews pop cultural commentary or debates i just don't feel like he's competent i don't think he has the language i don't think he's that girl my personal opinion of him you cannot say you cannot purport yourself to be a supporter of black women if you're willing to stoop this low and champion and celebrate a woman weaponizing and making light of this girl's trauma and assault by another fellow peer in the rap industry. Regardless of your feelings and opinions of Megan, regardless of whether or not you think she's an opportunist, regardless of whether you think she's mean or not, this girl has done nothing wrong. Megan is in her early 20s. She lost her mom and her grandma two weeks apart in the same month. Y'all call her an opportunist because in the beginning of her career, she was always in the mix. She was always around, you know, everybody's faves. Why wouldn't she be? What support system did she have when both of the most important maternal figures this woman had in her life were gone in the snap of a finger? She got men in the very same industry that's become her livelihood banding together to engage and to incite a smear campaign against this woman. Who does she have? Who does she have? Who was in her corner? You got people saying she's mean, she's rude, she got an attitude. Why, why wouldn't she be? Why wouldn't she be? After all the mess this girl done been through. Why? 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 I just need us to be very, very, very fucking for real. I said this in a video yesterday night. In the year of our Lord 2024, during this Gregorian calendar, if you are still identifying and calling yourself a barb, baby, you need to look in the mirror. You need to look in the mirror and ask yourself, what exactly may be wrong with me? And I, I mean, I'm, I feel delusional saying this. If her being married to a rapist wasn't enough, surely... Surely her speaking on this girl, speaking on this girl's mother, speaking on the dead might move you to find a heart. And here's the one last point I want to make. There was a moment during Nikki's life where she was mocking Meg's Houstonian accent. <laughs> the fuck? One thing I always found interesting about Nikki is obviously a lot of you guys know she's Trini. I feel like throughout her career, Nikki has dibbled and dabbled in different cultural aesthetics. I mean, there was a moment where she, you know, she was doing the chopsticks in the hair. There were some eras you can tell like she was heavily influenced and she had an affinity for Asian culture. And to be honest, there's never been a moment in Nikki's career where she's shown reverence and appreciation for Black American culture because she occupies a space that was shaped, molded, and formed by Black American creation. 
attention and influence. That is what rap is. That is what hip hop is, right? And if I'm being honest, I don't remember a time where I ever saw Nicki Minaj saying that outright. And if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. I'm open to critique. I'm not always right. I, under I understand that. Anyways, the point I'm getting to is I personally feel like, and I'm speaking just for me. If y'all agree, let me know in the comments. I do feel like that little moment was her xenophobia slipping out. And one of my mutuals, Henny on the talk, one of the best minds in the music critic space, Henny has had strong opinions about Nicki's interactions within the industry, within the hip hop landscape for a while now. And we share that criticism. I do feel as though Nicki Minaj has a bit of internalized anti-blackness that is directed specifically at black Americans. Like I need us to be fucking for real. She talking about some three Grammys and you can't stay on beat. Megan was on beat. Megan it's never missed the beat. And I hate that in having this conversation, we have to pick a side, we have to choose sides. It never gave stand. I don't stand anybody. What I will say is, during the TikTok strike, when Megan thought shit song was involved, Megan actually had her team reach out to me in support of the TikTok strike to invite me to one of her like low-key uh, secret parties or whatever. At a time when me, many other Black creators and people across the US decided to take part in that Black TikTok strike. At a time when my content was being heavily suppressed, TikTok was fucking with me behind the scenes. Nobody knew what I was going through. I became the face of this Black TikTok strike. I was in every magazine, every article. I mean, I was everywhere. At a time when I was feeling the weight of hypervisibility, feeling the pressures of these conglomerates, these multi-billion dollar industries, at a time when me and many other black creators and people across the US were taking part in a strike that could have negatively impacted Meg streaming for that song, for Thought Shit, Megan Thee Stallion was able to see through all of that noise, see what we were trying to do and extend me what I felt was like a, well, a welcome. Like, I support everything you're trying to do. I didn't actually end up going because it was in LA. I'm not based in LA. I saw other people who I was mutuals with, not mutuals with, attending this party. And that was my confirmation that, oh my God, like this was real. Like she actually invited me to this party. Like this wasn't a fake invitation. This wasn't just somebody trying to scam me. And I really appreciated that. Like it felt good to know that my efforts weren't in vain and that I wasn't disrupting. Like I wasn't crazy for feeling the way I felt and that I was on the right track and I was fighting for the right things. And the person whose music was caught up in the whirlwind of the situation was in support of this action. So that's another thing. Anyways, that's all I really have to say on the matter. Please, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned anything, if you got anything of substance from this, like and subscribe, share. Again, bear with me while we do housekeeping, while we figure out a nice intro. We're going to get into some things this year and I'm really excited to build a platform and to gain an audience on here that really wants to talk about some real shit. If you have any thoughts, opinions, perspectives, drop it in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. What do you guys think about this whole Nikki and Meg situation? But yeah, I can't wait. I will see you guys in the next video. Toodles.